All right, everyone should have recording access, so we should be all good to go. Uh, Joe, do you want to open up for the first question? Yeah, Matt, um, there's a report out that Teddy is expected to miss now that he's had a couple of days of uh, limited participation. Is that the way this is heading? Um, no, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that. How would you characterize it? Um, you know, he's he's. I mean, he's extremely limited right now. Um, you know, he's 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 throwing all the routes and stuff. Uh, you know, but but not with anyone around him. We don't want him to get stepped on or hurt. But uh, I mean, he's he's moving around well um, in terms of you know jogging and you know hasn't really opened up yet. So um, you know, I I don't know what he'll do until he does that. And uh, we're trying to be smart about when to do that. Uh, he's preparing as if he's going to play. Um, if if uh, he gets you know if we get to Sunday and he feels like he can play or if he feels like he can play you know Saturday if he feels like hey I can definitely do this then we'll, we're going to play him. Let's go to David Newton followed by Mike Slarte. That's kind of along the lines of what I was going to ask Matt. Just wanted to follow up on that though is uh, when when you, we saw him out there jogging a little bit like to the huddle. When would you be the latest you would be willing to, to go with opening up and see what he could do? And, and I got to follow up on that. Like I said, if he if he he's preparing as if he's going to play, I'm 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 not going to put him out there if he's going to hurt himself. But if if he can play, he's going to play. So if if he gets there Sunday and he's he's ready to go, then he, you know then then we're going to play with him. And the follow when um, you saw him last year, what he did with New Orleans going five and zero. Oh, what all did you learn watching that? That made him made you feel more comfortable that he can be your franchise guy that you may not have known had he not done that. Um, I mean, he made he made uh, crucial throws. You know, he he made the throws that we make in this offense. Um, you know, uh, he threw the I can't remember was he threw a, a covered corner route. I can't remember which team it was against. Maybe Chicago. Uh, you know, to put the game away. Um, you could just see that he can operate within the things that we do. It's you know really, you know Joe's offense is. Is, is really, you know, a, a version of the Saints. So you could see him making all the throws, making all the checks. Um, you could see him lead and you could see him win. Hey, Coach, Mike Solarci, Spectrum News One. Uh, asked this question of Coach Snow earlier because he's he made a reference to how many young guys he's been playing on on his side of the his side of the team. There have been a lot of young guys on this roster getting a lot of playing time. Has that, how much of a challenge is that from a coaching perspective, trying to get these guys up to speed? I know we're, we're going into week 11 here, but or 12 or whatever year we're in. But, I mean, what, what's the biggest challenge for the coaches to try to get these young guys going in a, in, in, from, from just your seat? Um, just, just uh, you know, it's one, thing to, it's one thing to know the assignment. It's another thing to have, you know, have mastery. Um, you know, it's another thing. It's one thing to be a professional athlete and get paid. It's one thing to know how to truly be a pro um, in terms of taking care of yourself, taking care of your body, under, understanding the grind, understanding how to take notes. Um, guys that come from college, some some come in with a fair, decent knowledge of that. Some some not as much. Guys that have lasted in the NFL for five, six, seven years, they, they know how to do those things. And so, um, you know, we have a good group of young guys. Um, you know, they they've 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 developed throughout the course of the year, but at the same time, a lot of them, their roles have, have uh, accelerated. And so, um, you know, it's one thing to, Hey, I'm going to, you know, be the gunner and the, and the, and the jammer on the punt and punt return teams. I'm going to play on kickoff and, you know, all of a sudden now I'm, Hey, I'm the starting corner. Um, but what, what a tremendous opportunity for them to show what they can do. So from a coaching perspective, um, you maybe can't do quite as much. You maybe can't do quite as much game plan wise to take away their best player because, you know, they're, they're still figuring out um, some of the, you know, more basic things. Um, but, you know, it's, it's a situation we're in and, we, you know, we, uh, we know that we'll look up and, and you know, in, in two, three, four, five years, um, those guys will have a lot of experience. So uh, as I said to them today, um, this is the National Football League. There are no excuses. Like I, I expect, whether you're a, a seven-year vet or this is you know week week as you said week ten or eleven for for you as a player, um, there's a standard and we, you have to play to it. So we're not waiting for the future. We're just understanding that um, 
these guys will get better and better and better. So we we'll just have to keep coaching them. Let's go to Skylar Callahan, followed by Steve Reed. Hey, Matt, I know you were able to face Will twice in college during his time at West Virginia. Uh, just kind of what what did you think about him back then and comparing him then to now where he's at and, and kind of his development? And then uh, where do you think he is in, in terms of grasping this offense? Because I know last year, different coaching staff, but there was some talk that maybe he wasn't quite catching on to it a little bit. But do you think that he's kind of catching on to this offense a little bit better? Uh, so my, my recollection of Will was that um, he was always cool, calm, collected. He, you know, he ran that team. You know, they signaled the plays into him, and then he signaled them out to everybody. Um, I remember when the draft process was going on, uh, me saying, boy, he, he, he was for a spread quarterback, he was as pro style as, as you could be because, you know, he was checking plays, he was checking RPOs, he was doing all those things. And, uh, that ability to me to uh, get people in the right play to communicate. That's a lot of playing quarterback in the national football league. There's, there's no, there's no issues at all with his ability with him grasping what we do. He, he's a worker. He's a grinder. He comes in, he, uh, he prepares at a high level. Um, he, he gets extra reps. He stays out after practice. Um, he's, he's always working. So his work ethic, uh, his mental, you know, toughness and all those things are, are uh, real strengths that you saw in college and you see them now. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know about last year, but to me, um, you know, he understands what we're doing and what we're doing is so different um, than what he did in college. And, and it's so different than what they did last year in terms of the way the way that we coach playing quarterback in this system. And um, I, you can see him week in and week out just getting better and better and better at it. Matt, uh, you've, you've had a couple of days of practice this week and I know you evaluate it week to week. But do you know who would be who would start if uh, if Teddy can't go this week? Yeah, uh, we we probably wouldn't, wouldn't wouldn't say anything about that till till right probably till Saturday or Sunday. Um, both guys are doing a good job. Obviously, I haven't seen the practice tape yet. You know, there's um, we just just walked off the practice field. I thought both guys yet again today um, did a nice job. Both guys have good energy in the huddle. Uh, both guys are grinding away. Um, we're convinced that both guys can 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 be winning quarterbacks in the National Football League. So we'll go all the way through the week and. Um, um, if, if Teddy doesn't go, then we would, uh, then we would, um, um, pick, pick the guy we feel so that feels like gives us the best chance to win this week. All right, let's go to Elena Getzenberg and then Jonathan Alexander. Um, Matt, yesterday you had said you wanted to see how Teddy responded to yesterday's work. So did he respond as you expected? Were there any setbacks or anything like that? No, no setbacks. Um, it's just a process. It's just a process to see, um, you know, a how he feels, and then b. I think the biggest thing for me is just how you know how functional his movement is. You know, in the pocket. You know, Teddy's greatest gift uh, in terms of playing quarterback is his pocket movement and awareness and ability to hang in there. And so, um, you know, for him to play for us, he has to have that. And so, um, you know, in terms of dropping back, throwing all those things, you know, he he looks good. But you know, can can he do those things? And um, um, no setbacks. Just it's just going to take a couple of days to see. Hey, is, you know, is is he going to be at prime level? Or you know, what I don't want to do ever with any of our players is put them out there where they can hurt themselves more seriously. And then I was curious. I asked Joe this too, but you said this was a big evaluation week for PJ and Will, even if Teddy was to play Sunday. So, is there anything in particular you're watching for when you watch them out there? Like, are there specific things you want to see them do, or anything in particular? Just, just prepare and then, and then the way that they play. You know, so often both those guys, you know, they're throwing the the other team's routes, and so, you know, it's hard to evaluate a guy on a on a play he doesn't really run or know. So t this week, they're running our plays, and so um, you get to see both of them, you know, playing, you know, at, with our plays, doing our things, um, and their preparation level. And both their both guys' preparation level all year has been outstanding, and so um, that's not really a question. It's just more, you know. Um, get a chance to see them play quarterback in our system. Um, I haven't had really had a chance to do that very much. I mean, here and there, but not very much since camp. And uh, they're, they're way different players since camp. Hey, man, I hope you're doing well. Um, you know, I, I don't know if you can say this, but uh, what type of grade of the AC joint separation did Christian have? Um, I don't know that I, I – I, uh, maybe, Bruce, maybe Bruce can answer that. I, I, I don't know that I can answer that um, just out of, you know, respect for uh, Christian. Sure. 
And also, uh, have you noticed uh, more of a need or a trend in the hybrid type player similar to Jeremy Chin in recent years? Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, I think uh, I think everyone's looking for those guys, um, guys who can play, you know, multiple positions, guys who can be on the field and can, you know, line up in, in one position, be, you know, one thing and the next ne- next snap, excuse me, one, one snap, be one position, the next snap, be another position. You know, we, you know, Jeremy Chin is probably as versatile a player uh, as there is, you know, right now um, that we've seen and Curtis Sam on, on the other side of the ball, you know, probably as versatile. So, uh, we, you know, we're trying to, um, <clears throat> excuse me, make the most out of, uh, not really make the most, we're trying to help guys play their best football. And so if there's multiple things that they can do, we want to make the most out of those opportunities. Let's go to Brett Jensen and then Nick Carboni. Yeah, Matt, I'm curious. When the NFL decided to put the lockdown on in terms of making all teams go through the COVID response, did that make things more difficult for you just because you guys are trying to actually maybe potentially have a new starting quarterback in terms of team meetings and stuff like that? Had it made, has it made the process more difficult? Um, not, not really. Um, you know, we, we, we run under that intense protocol for two weeks. Um, so we've already gotten used to most, most of the things, um, you know, I had to tell my wife that, you know, um, you know, like literally the things outside the building, you know, are, are maybe a little harder, you know, in terms of, um, just even running in, like running into another coach or, you know, that lives, you know, I, I can't, you know, I can't go see another, like, I can't run into one of the assistant coaches, you know, out somewhere. You know, we have to be really diligent and vigilant about some of the new things that have been added in terms of outside the building, but within the building. Um, I, we, we've been under it because of, you know, the things that happened after the first Falcons game. And um, a lot of them, I think we were doing anyway. I think uh, Eddie and Levins and Dr. Gritter, uh, they, they do such a good job. I think that we're, you know, we're already doing most of them. Matt, I'm not sure the exact timeline of um, your recruitment of PJ at Temple. I know you guys arrived at the same time as head coach and quarterback, but you had been there a few years earlier. If you did have heavy involvement with his recruitment, what do you remember about that? And how would you describe your relationship with him as head coach and quarterback when he was there with you? Uh, So he was committed to the head coach before me, uh, Steve Adazio. And when I got the job, uh, Francis Brown, who was a great recruiter and coach for me, said, hey, coach, this is the first guy you have to go see. So we went up to Elizabeth, New Jersey. And, and um, I remember we went to, I think it was Applebee's with he and his family. We were also recruiting two other guys from Elizabeth. So and they all, you know, they all knew each other. So we went to we went to, to dinner at Applebee's. And we sat there and I just remember they had just won the state championship and PJ had driven them like. I think it was like 97 yards with, with a minute left to, to win the state championship in New Jersey. And uh, they were talking about the year before when they lost it as juniors. And I remember PJ saying, um, saying, um, you know, all he could do was talk about that year and how disappointed he was and the things he did wrong. And I remember saying to myself, like, what a winner this guy is like, like he, he just won the state championship, but he cares so much about football that he's talking about the year before. So that, that story kind of always, you know, stuck to my head. And, and then as, as my starting quarterback, you know, I, I waited about four or five weeks and then we put him in, uh, put him in one game, like week game three, played a little bit, then we put him in and, um, you know, we took off from there. And, and just like he did in high school, we went to the championship game as a junior. He won it as a senior. Um, he's, he was a guy on our team that um, everyone respected. He was very, very easy to coach. Um, he loves football. So, the, the, those were my memories of him. And then, you know, obviously since then, I've just uh, tried to keep up with him and watch him in the XFL. And when he was with the Colts, like I do with all the guys that, uh, that played for me. Guys, yeah, so we have time for three more. So let's go to Steven Toronto, then Sharon Thorsland, finish with Joe Person. Coach, a couple of weeks ago, you were talking about players from East Texas. And one of those players, Adrian Peterson, is still chugging along at 35 years old. What do you attribute his longevity at the running back position to, and how much of a challenge does he still present for your defense? Well, um, you know, it's funny. Ted, Teddy and I were walking down after practice, and, and he we were talking. He was talking about you know, playing with him in, in Minnesota. We were talking about the weather. He was talking about just how you know the things that he would do. I think he's uh, one of the most gifted football players, uh, one of the most dominant football players. You know, really of 
of my, you know, watching football generation era. And so I think elite, elite, elite talent um, has a, a big part of it. And then a tremendous work ethic. And um, you watch him run the ball now. I mean, he, he runs the ball hard and with passion and still has great feet. Um, still remember the, like, the first couple of runs he made after coming back from um, hurting his knee. Um, he came back so quickly and the runs he made were unbelievable. Um, so I just think he's really gifted, but he also has a tremendous, tremendous work ethic. And his running style fits their offense. Um, he's a physical runner who, who, who has great quickness and speed. And, um, you know, it'll be a, it'll be a challenge. Um, you know, we uh, we're coming off a game where we gave up, you know, a, a long run and, and um, um, you know, we, we can't do that and win. Aaron, you need to unmute. Yep, sorry. <laughs> hey, Coach, I was um, going to ask you about the Lions offensive, well, particularly Matt Stafford. I know he's got that thumb injury, but is expected to play. What have you seen out of out of him and um, how he's directing that offense this season? He's unbelievable. Um, you know, um, his ability to, to run with the football, his ability to slide in the pocket, his ability to make all these different arm slot throws and um, his ability to push the ball down the field, I mean, he, he's a, as dangerous uh, a quarterback as we've seen, and we've seen, we've seen, we've seen most of the great ones so far this year. And he's he's um, he's he's uh, he's right there. I mean, he's he's um, he's explosive, um, and I think a big part of it, which people don't maybe talk about as much, is his ability to move and and, and slide and throw. We have to be, we have to be so good in terms of keeping him in the pocket or having someone else, you know, keep him in the pocket because he. Um, he can hurt you in many different ways, but uh, I'm beyond impressed with everything that I've seen from him. Hey, man, I think this came up earlier in the week, but just wondered if you're in a position where can you confirm it's an MCL sprain for Teddy at this point? Say, say it again. Is it an MCL sprain for Teddy? I mean, I think he's got a, you know, he's, he's got a knee injury. He's got a couple of things with the knee that you know, he's been dealing with. Um, I'm, I'm not going to probably get into exactly, you know, diagnosis and all that, but um, I just, a knee injury and, and uh, he's battling through it. All right, guys, we got to let coach go. Coach, we appreciate it.